proper marriage. I would say, and that is why probably what has prompted the Supreme Court to go into the whole issue and lay down as to uh, things as to the rights that a lady in such a relationship is. Now, so far as children from the second wife or even children born from a living relationship are concerned, they are protected under the law. They are protected under the Hindu Marriage Act, under the Hindu Succession Act. So therefore, so far as they are concerned, their rights to property are definitely protected. The woman really has to look out for herself. Again, here I will add one more thing. Our country or our laws do not recognize prenuptial agreements, if any of you are aware of them. In the Western countries, especially in well-to-do families, and especially amongst the glitterati, these females, uh, I mean these film stars and performers, whenever they get married, the first thing they do is, okay, we are putting on the ring tomorrow, we are getting married tomorrow, but today, let us go to the lawyer, enter into a prenup. They enter into a prenup, which establishes or sets out the rights of both the parties. Such things are not recognized in our country as yet. At best, the courts may look into it to find out the nature and status of the relationship. But I, I think now that the Supreme Court has commented upon uh, living relationships, days are not far off when some court or the other of this country, and maybe even the Supreme Court is called upon to decide on prenup agreements. And that will ultimately also form part of some law or the other. Maybe even the living relationship law if it becomes law. Two aspects I would like to enlighten us. One is what is the status of illegitimate child? How far he would get some right in the property of the ancestor? And second is about the adopted son or daughter. Adopted what would be sons, their status, whether they would be entitled to inherit? Adopted, adopted sons, sons or daughters equal status with that of the natural born because they go out of their natural family, come into the new family. They are treated on par. So far as illegitimate children are concerned, as you said, their rights are protected under the Hindu law and they will get, so far as the self-acquired property of the father is concerned, they will get a share out of it. Now, here there is a contentious issue so far as co-personary property is concerned. One of your favorite judges, Justice G.S. Singhvi, referred a particular matter where this issue arose to a larger bench of the Supreme Court. That issue is still pending. I would not like to comment upon it much, but there the learned judges have felt that an earlier judgment of the Supreme Court needed a relook at, and they felt that an illegitimate child should even be entitled to a share in co personary property. I will not say anything much here because the issue is pending. So far as my comment in Mullah's Hindu law is concerned, I will confess to all of you that I had made quite a longish comment on that, but then I decided to shorten it. And it is, in fact, apart from that comment, it is one of the last words in the comment that is more important. I have said that I, I hope and pray that the Supreme Court will look at the wording of the section. I was focusing on only one word. It says, the property of the parents. So I, the property is something, the is a word that even the Supreme Court has interpreted judicially. The Supreme Court will have to look at that. Of course, salutary object that even an illegitimate child can get maybe rights there. But then again, the offside is also true. Somebody might say, illegitimate child, you know what? You know property. In the same way, there might be another point of view. What is the fault of the legitimately born children? That is a question that I put to all of you and you must ponder upon this. Those children also have equal rights. So that issue is still open. I hope the Supreme Court does the right thing and I will stop at that. Whether it is right or wrong, wait for the next edition of Mullah's Hindu Law. That's all that I will say. Yes. 
I want to share my personal opinion that uh, it may be help others or not, that no child is illegitimate. Even father or mother can be illegitimate, but no child is illegitimate. Very true. Very true. Very well said. Very well said. Sir, on the sides, uh, Yes. What is, sir, uh, what, what is the normal practice which is done to you for uh, a normal practice? Yes. yes. Sorry. That release of rights is taken from women. Yes. That is, I release my rights uh, in the property in favor yes. of yes. others. Uh, so, so far as this 2005 amendment is concerned, uh, my question is that if the release of rights, if she has uh, let go of her rights prior to 2005, but there has no been, there has not been any partition otherwise, would she have a right? Uh, in the See, property? release basically means that she is giving up her rights. Hmm? Once she has given up her rights, she no longer claims a right in that property because she has already got something out of it. So morally speaking, she has no moral right to go back and say that now give me my share. But the other view is equally possible. Okay, I might have gone into a release deed, but the law says that I have a share. Give me my share now. There cannot be in agreement those circumstances, against In those circumstances, probably the court will have to balance equities, I will say. Suppose, I, I'll quote an example. Suppose her share of the property ostensibly worked out comes to 25 lakhs of rupees. And by way of the release deed, she has already got 10 lakhs of rupees. One view is, of course, that you've got everything, go away, nothing doing. But equity jurisprudence says balance both, deduct that amount, give her the rest. That is something that can be done by the courts. But the release part should also be registration, subject to registration part, and documentation, proper release stamp duty. should also be registered. If registered, yes, then the brothers would be on a stronger footing. Sir, uh, one more is, supposing there is a uh, suit, can a suit for partition yes. be maintained by a mother as a guardian of her minor uh, children? Mother can maintain as a guardian of the children, yes. Because uh, if she is separated from her husband's family, uh, the, to the, the children don't separate, it is so, only the, right. it is only the Parents that separate. So she can sue. Blood ties are never severed. I'll end by saying that. Blood ties of blood are never severed. Blood is thicker than water. The children definitely have a right. Whatever rights the wife has or the mother has, they are intact, sacrosanct, yes. But the rights of children are sacrosanct. Again, I repeat, blood ties are thicker than water. And I end with that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. One more question. Widow. Widow came with the uh, son from, who born from the earlier husband. Sorry, I couldn't get your Please, Lord Sir. Uh, please, sir. Sorry. Have you per The person who married with the widow. Yes. Widow came with the son. Son. Widow who, came with who, the son. Who was born from the earlier yes, husband. Yes. Lord uh, yes. Sir. Then after the wife, widow wife expired and the husband who again married, again married. Oh. And from the side, side wedlock, two sons born. Whether the uh, whether the son who came with the widow is uh, entitled entitled in the ancestor property? No. Whether, whether the uh, not entitled. Applies there or not? Not entitled. Unfortunately, he is not entitled. So where he can get that? He can he can get property, the individual from the property. I mean individual property of the father. But as uh, so far as ancestral property of the father is concerned, he will not be entitled to it. Sir, anything. kind of see here that the, the wife who is the legal wedded wife. Yes. Who came with the son so well, 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 But the still, he is a stepson. Yes. So that stepson will not get anything in the co pasnari property of the father. Wait for that Supreme Court decision. Justice Singhvi has done a great thing by referring it to a larger bench. You and I both must wait for the outcome of that. So we'll have to wait for that. Even if hypothetically there are cases pending right now, I believe that the normal and the right thing to do by even the high courts would be, they would be adjourning these cases. Let's wait for the Supreme Court decision. That is what they would say. Sir, whether they can, uh, they, they can claim over the property of the uh, fathers uh, who, was, uh, who, was already, who was already died and, and, and they, in the... 
uh, mother, mother's father's property. Whether sorry, that's sorry, I, I couldn't get yes, your sir. question properly. That, that, so that son has no right in the yes in the, in the power. ancestral property. Yes. But so far as the earlier father. Ema to malaj. That where, where the natural family, of course, he will get. Because in his natural family, of course. And before that, I'll say two words. Uh, it's very important to have two things. Advocacy, in reality, is an assertion of the right of freedom of expression on behalf of litigants. Has made it a grand success. I would, first of all, thank all the speakers, namely Shri Mihir Joshi, Mr. Udayan Vyas, Honorable Justice Akil Kureshi, and Mr. Satyajit Desai. That apart, I also thank all the members of the managing committee who had worked hard to make this function a grand success. My colleagues Jai, Manan, managing committee members Naina Ben, Richa, Punesh, and all of them, since I was absent for two days, they had worked hard to make this seminar going on. Otherwise, it was a possible. There was a possibility of postponing it but they did their best and made it successful. I hope that same kind of participation is there in all other seminars. I propose that our association arranges at least three more seminars, legal seminars. Thank you very much. Thanks all.